Thinking about making the move to South Boston, or as most call it, Southie? Well, there's a lot to know about Southie, and in this video, we're gonna unpack it all, from a hi quick history of the town to the neighborhoods that adorn the town today. Southie is rich with history and has a strong sense of community. It is an evolving, vibrant neighborhood of Boston. From the departed to Goodwill Hunting, South Boston has been the setting of many well-known movies over the years. However, you're gonna find that South Boston is quite different from the neighborhoods that these movies often portray. This community is one of the city's most storied and historically rich areas, but that isn't to say that Southie is stuck in the past. Far from it, actually. Over the past few years, South Boston has reinvented itself. The community has seen new life with the opening of new restaurants, hotels, and housing developments. From stunning new condo buildings to the refurbishment of many of the old Victorian-style triple-deckers, the neighborhood is filled with life and character that has led to the influx of working professionals and families streaming into the area. South Boston has become one of the city's most sought-after areas, and it's hard to imagine, but South Boston was previously fertile farmland. The first formal settlement actually dates back more than 350 years ago. South Boston would become a haven for Irish Catholic immigrants, and in 1804, South Boston was annexed to Boston and quickly became the center of a rapidly growing industrial development. Factories in South Boston produce everything from glassworks to chemicals, and this led to immigrant workers and their families migrating to South Boston. By the 1820s, Irish families made up most of the area's population, and by World War I, the population of South Boston numbered roughly around 70,000 people, which is more than double what it is today. Today, Southie is one of the most interesting, vibrant, and friendly places to live in the city. Its convenient location and easy access to public transportation make it a popular place for people to call home. Other reasons people call Southie home is because of its beaches, parks, and waterfront. If you're considering making a move to South Boston, then it's important to know that there are many smaller communities that make up the greater community. When people generally start evaluating South Boston, they start by segmenting the neighborhood into three. There's the west side and east side and the seaport district. These three areas of South Boston are all very different, provide different types of value to prospective home buyers. The seaport district has become home to the biggest development boom in all of Boston in the last couple of years, which is an accomplishment in itself because the city has been developing at pretty much a breakneck speed. You would not recognize the Seaport District today if it's been a good five years since you've last been there. And if it's a city feel that you're ultimately looking for, then the Seaport District might just be that perfect place for you. The Seaport District sports many 20 plus story buildings and is home to some of Boston's biggest companies, as well as some of the most premier condos the city has to offer. Much of the new housing in the Seaport District has been for luxury rentals instead of condos. That being said, if the seaport's where you want to live and you're looking to buy, then there are definitely some hidden gems. Fun fact is that most people don't even realize that the seaport district is part of Southie. So when people start talking about South Boston and the neighborhoods, they are generally referring to the east side or the west side. Generally referencing the east versus west side refers to the areas that go along the intersection of where east and west Broadway meet. The east side is considered the eastern side or the eastern point. And you guessed it, the west side is the western side of that point. <laughs> However, there are some gray areas mixed in. Both sides have different feels and personalities. The east side is home to more traditional single family Victorians or two or three family homes that have been con condo converted. We call these double or triple deckers. This is not to say that you can't find some bigger condo developments on the east side. It's just that, well, the, more the exception rather than the rule. In contrast, the west side has seen larger developments over the last couple of years. Remember when we were talking about the factories earlier? Historically speaking, this is where those factories were housed, and therefore, this is where those larger tracts of land that are available to development are. There have been a lot of high-end condo developments in the last couple of years, and if you love the idea of parking in your garage spot while taking the elevator up to your floor without ever walking outside, then the west side might just be the place for you. But if that's not your style, then don't worry. You're also gonna still find quite a few of those triple deckers that have been condo converted as well. And there are quite a few neighborhoods within the neighborhood of South Boston. So officially, they're rec not, not recognized as neighborhoods, but these are more what we think of when we think of neighborhoods. And these neighborhoods are, you know, they, they include the Fort Point, City Point, Telegraph Hill, Andrew Square in the Seaport District. And then there's the West Side neighborhood, if you will. Andrew Square is a neighborhood that spans from the Columbus Avenue line, where South Boston and Dorchester meet up, to Old Colony and along Dorchester Avenue. It jets out to about Gates and Dorchester Street. 
And you're gonna notice one of the two red line MBTA stops is called Andrew Square. Andrew Square was originally named Washington Village, but then was renamed to honor the 25th governor of Massachusetts. His name was John Albion Andrew. It seems, well, what goes around comes around, is one of the biggest developments in the city and the biggest currently ongoing development in the neighborhood is named Washington Village. This new development is a five acre, one million square foot project that will include 656 residential units. The development will consist of eight buildings ranging from six to 22 stories in height and will include 45,000 square feet of outdoor space. Once completed, this development will transform the Andrew Square neighborhood. Now, City Point is on the east, east side of South Boston. It spans from L Street over to Farragut, covering all in between. It also spans East 1st and through East 3rd Street, going all the way down to Dorchester. People looking to buy in South, they often look to City Point because of the more town feel. It's less vertical, if you will. City Point is mostly smaller two to three family condos that have been condo converted with the occasional single family and larger development mixed in. City Point is also close to Boston's best beaches as well as Castle Island. Telegraph Hill is a neighborhood that consists roughly from Gate Street to L Street and from East Broadway down to Columbia Road. Telegraph Hill is home to Dorchester Heights Park as well as L Street Beach. The section of East Broadway on Telegraph Hill is more commercial with a mix of restaurants and local storefronts mixed in. It's also home to one of Southie's most desirable streets, K Street. Now the Seaport District is one of Boston's fastest growing neighborhoods. And as I mentioned before, this neighborhood has been transformed in the last couple of decades. Looking at the neighborhood now, it's really hard to imagine that Robert Kraft tried to build the Patriots Stadium here and ultimately what seems like a lifetime ago. Today, the seaport is home to some of the most expensive real estate in the entire city, as well as some of the most premier companies in the state and world for that fact. The seaport district is also home to some of Boston's best restaurants and most vibrant nightlife. The seaport district offers residents of South Boston the most city feel of all the other neighborhoods. Now the four point neighborhood boundaries aren't exactly defined, but include the land a few blocks on either side of the four point channel. Do you remember the movie, uh, do you remember in the movie The Departed, 344 Washington Street? That was Four Point. And in Four Point, you're gonna find a mixture of housing and commercial space with really big plans of development that is going to further enhance the area for residents as well as visitors alike. When it comes to South Boston and two different areas, there's a lot to take in. South Boston has it all for all different types of home buyers, from first time home buyers to people looking to downsize or move to the suburbs. There is an option for everybody. Its proximity to downtown as well as the highways make it a really great place for people to live. Finding the perfect neighborhood really depends on your personal needs and style preferences. Homes in South Boston offer something for, quite frankly, every need and lifestyle. From family homes and townhouses to apartments and lavish condos. Not to mention its mix and match of traditional and modern architecture styles. Southie really does have it all. There are also some big future developments going on in South Boston. The blocked off sideways and sound of the swinging hammer has pretty much been a constant for Southie for the last decade. And one of the biggest projects to adorn South Boston is that Washington Village, which I mentioned earlier. This five acre site is gonna consist of a million square feet of mixed use space and is expected to house a grocery store, restaurants, and cafes, as well as a pharmacy. The eight new buildings that range from six to 22 stories will change the skyline while providing 45,000 square feet of outdoor space for residents. 110 of the 656 units are going to be affordable housing. Now the Edison power plant in South Boston has officially been given the green light by the Boston Planning and Development Agency. This large scale development will consist of new building construction as well as renovating four historic turbine halls. The 15.2 acre development will consist of 760,000 square feet of commercial and R&D space, 80,000 square feet of retail space, a 240 hotel room, 636 housing units. And one of the best parts is that 5.7 acres of the 15.2 acre development is going to be designated public open space with the largest chunk being a two and a half acre waterfront park. Other green spaces will include a basketball court and at least one other recreational area. Then there's the Seaport District, which is constantly changing. Most of the change has been the 33 acre, 7.6 million square foot development, WS development um, has done. We're gonna to continue to see them developing more of this office and retail space as they continue with that development. And briefly mentioned earlier, the Fort Point development plan is still in the beginning stages, but would transform the neighborhood. As proposed, it's an 88.7 acres currently occupied by office and parking lots. 
The vision is to turn this space into a blend of public space and new private developments. The public open space would include two large parks, a bunch of pocket parks, a promenade, and even an amphitheater. I hope you found this information helpful. If you're looking to learn more about other neighborhoods in Boston, then check out the other videos that we've done for you as well. And should you need any help finding your next Boston or Boston Metro home, then please feel free to shoot us a message or give us a call. We look forward to helping you.